Hi everyone, I'm Karunya Rao and you've tuned into Money Control. Today we are here to discuss a very important story which uh, was announced yesterday, which came out yesterday. Vedanta Foxconn Joint Venture, which has selected Gujarat to set up its semiconductor manufacturing facility along with its display fabrication uh, business as well. So this particular plant is something that has been the top of the town since the announcement broke. And Rachita uh, from Money Control, who's my colleague and who's been on top of the story, joins us right now with all the details. Rachita, talk to us Hi, about Karina. this. Hi, uh, and I know you're very busy tracking all the developments associated with the story. So first up, I want to ask, what does this announcement entail? Of course, we know for a fact that they picked Gujarat to set up this particular manufacturing unit uh, but if you could tell us the final nuances of the announcement and what should we uh, look forward to so um, you're right. I mean, uh, the announcement came yesterday that uh, Vedanta Foxconn joint venture is actually going to set up the semiconductor unit in Gujarat. But this has been in the making for a long time. I mean, um, you know, uh, if you just look what happened in the last few years, we have realized globally that there is a need to scale up manufacturing of semiconductors and India was uh, significantly dependent on uh, imports. So uh, there is a definite push in that direction. And uh, Vedanta actually was among the first uh, to kind of uh, jump into this, uh, this space. And uh, they tied up with Foxconn. And uh, the idea was to set up one huge unit uh, for the manufacturing of uh, semiconductors and, um, uh, uh, and the display um, glass that you uh, mentioned earlier. So th and this uh, because it has moved so fast and because it has the backing of Vedanta, which has experience and uh, uh, which has capability in India for other uh, other uh, commodities and Foxconn, which brings in the technology. Uh, yeah. Of course, a lot of states were chasing this joint venture because uh, we have to understand that this is a huge investment. Uh, this this project itself is going to uh, the initial investment is going to be around one lakh fifty four thousand crore rupees, yeah. which is uh, almost twenty billion dollars, and it's a huge investment. So obviously, all the states have been uh, looking at it, and uh, the employment opportunity is huge. Uh, um, uh, they have said that it's going to create some one lakh jobs. So that's again a huge number. So. Uh, it has been in the making for a bit and there were a lot of speculations on whether they'll uh, which state they would pick up because all the states were vying for it um in fact uh, interestingly enough uh, around uh, july end uh, there were very strong uh, uh, media reports uh, that uh, they might actually set up this unit in Maharashtra. In yeah. fact, uh, if you remember, it was all over the papers. I mean, there were pictures of uh, Foxconn yeah. and... Uh, in sorry. fact, that, that's what I was coming to because uh, right. there's a political right. blame game of sorts which has started right. in you know, Maharashtra government right. opposition right. is saying that you know, we almost right. had this deal and they went to Gujarat. So, so let, me, let, me just step back. Yeah. let me just step back and uh, tell you first what the project is. What we know of the project is that uh, um, Vedanta comes in with 60%, Foxconn comes in with 40%. They're investing, I told you, $20 billion. Uh, the focus is, of course, on the semiconductor uh, ecosystem. They are looking at semiconductor and display glass, which is very important for uh, the electronic industry. And uh, uh, that is what the project per se is. Now, uh, uh, the political discussion that you were talking about, uh, in fact, uh, uh, like like we discussed that it was all over the papers that, uh, you know, there were pictures of Maharashtra government officials with, uh, uh, you know, uh, officials of the JV and uh, there were statements and media reports. I mean, uh, as a journalist, every day I would wake up to some media report saying that uh, Maharashtra has been chosen. But uh, interestingly enough, every time, uh, you know, you spoke to officials, you realized that the dotted line has not been signed yet. In fact, uh, we were actually the first to say uh, on August 3rd, we ran an insider, a money control insider, saying that it the and we actually said that picture of Ibaki, hai. you know, they might be saying that it's going to be Maharashtra, but it's not done because what we had uh, found out from our sources around then that while they were talking to Maharashtra, there were conversations also going on with Gujarat. So the political angle here is that uh, 
ever since the announcement has come out um uh, aditya thakre who was a part of the um, uh, previous government in maharashtra took to social media and uh, he has uh, you know kind of gone ahead and said that this was you know we had almost finalized it and uh, for for all practical purposes it did seem like uh, this project was in maharashtra's kitty so uh, that of course uh, but then uh, you know the, that government uh, got overthrown and there is a new government uh, that has come in power which has uh, bjp backing and uh, uh, so the game has changed uh, what we also need to realize is the timeline so uh, you you know the maharashtra political change uh, the government change was happening in july around the same time um, what happened is that gujarat came out with its semiconductor policy now gujarat was the first state to come out with a semiconductor policy and that is something very important for investors because that gives you clarity on what kind of expectations you can have from a state and when you are putting in so much money in a project obviously that is something they would uh, require so a lot happened between july end and august and eventually um, uh, you know uh, we know that gujarat has been selected as the location for the unit that's right in fact uh, i was uh, i was also reading and uh, watching some statements coming by from uh, mr anil agarwal wherein he spoke to cnbc tv 18 just moments ago uh, and he said that that you know maharashtra project uh, will happen but it will be sort of forward integration to their uh, uh, you know their, their jv plant in gujarat so do you have any details about this or any idea of how this will work first go to gujarat set up a plant and then do do another forward integrated facility in in maharashtra so karunya again i'll just take a step back because it's very important we understand why is this semiconductor unit so important yeah. i mean uh, not just for india if you look at what's happening globally countries across the world are you know it's uh, literally a race right now to uh, build semiconductor units i mean uh, right now almost uh, 90% of the capacity is concentrated between a few countries i mean uh, very recently us sent a delegation to taiwan because taiwan is really a leader um, you know in the space so it really is a global race right now uh, the semiconductor chip uh, uh, basically you know it's used in mobile phones it it's used in tvs it, it would be used in um, ev uh, units and so it's it's a huge spectrum of um you know uh, electronics and uh, um uh, equipments that actually depend on semiconductors mm -hmm. so uh, when mr anil agarwal was talking about it what he said to cnbc was that this is just the first raw material unit that is going to come up in gujarat but what he is talking about is is the uh, you know related industry that will kind of come up around it because once you have the raw in, Uh, material once you have the ingredients it's but obvious that there would be some forward integration so he was yeah. talking about that i don't think he specifically uh, because i think uh, he later in the interview said that we are not doing it but there are hundreds of companies which will do it so basically what he meant was that you know for an ex for example um, uh, an iphone unit or um, you know uh, a tv uh, unit these these people will start investing when they realize that india actually has the capability and india can be a good source of raw material so for to that extent what he said was that for that maharashtra could be a a, a preferred destination but obviously uh, that we'll have to wait and watch right in fact i was i was just um, you know thinking about it and and wanted to ask you as well this is the first semiconductor plant that's going to come up in the country um will this uh, you know sort of uh, firstly ease significantly the shortage that india inc is facing when it comes to the semiconductor chips and where does this put us on the global map when it comes to manufacturing this very niche product which a lot of countries are still not doing see karunia uh, you know the bigger picture here is that india is talking about being a 1 trillion dollar digital economy and if you want to reach there obviously there are small building blocks which are required and uh, semiconductor is uh, one of the 
key building blocks i mean uh, it really um, uh, comes down to you know uh, having i mean we've been talking about being atmanirbhar but this is one space where we are far from atmanirbhar and we are highly dependent on uh, imports so uh, again uh, you know uh, this this of course uh, would be very important uh, you know uh, uh, for building that digital economy that we are talking about uh this of course will be the first unit and this will not happen overnight but of course now that they have taken a big step of uh, identifying the location things will start moving and the companies uh, involved are very keen to move fast on it and the government is really keen to move fast on it in fact uh, the chief minister of uh, gujarat while signing the document said something interesting he said that uh, you know the vedanta foxconn uh, joint venture will be welcomed with a red carpet and not with red tapism so that that's that's a positive sign and it looks like it will move fast so uh, this is the first capability we'll have to see how it moves the good thing is uh, uh, we have two companies here one vedanta which has uh, you know executed projects in india so it brings that on the table and foxconn has experience in technology in semiconductors it brings that on the table and gujarat of course is uh, promising uh, a lot to them in terms of the speed of the project so hopefully it should move fast and of course there are others who are looking at this space so hopefully this ecosystem will develop fast okay uh, just to put things in perspective um, why is there such a push and how is the semiconductor situation right now world over i mean i know for a fact that we've been grappling with the shortage for you know uh, for, for a couple of years now especially uh, got, you know worse than when the pandemic happened and there was supply chain related issues and production was halted and all of that but how is the situation now because what we keep hearing from oems and different companies is that it's easy but it will take some more time so uh, i know for a fact that there is a there is a china plus one push here there is uh, you know uh, countries like the us as well which have passed law to incentivize advanced node uh, semiconductor conductor manufacturing so how is the scenario right now as we speak because this facility will take some time to actually come up and start producing meaningfully so uh, that's that's a very important aspect because uh, see if you remember during the pandemic it actually i don't know if uh, you had a personal experience but i know for a fact that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, laptops and mobile phones there were issues uh, yeah. i remember it's talking hard. to somebody uh, cars as well so there was a major supply chain disruption and what it made us realize is that Uh, you know you can't depend on the global supply chain for that i mean as much as we are uh, globalized and uh, you know we are integrated uh, you know some level of self sufficiency is really important because i remember somebody telling me that there is a wait list for laptop and uh, his uh, this person's office had told him to wait for two months can you imagine uh, working without a laptop for two months i mean so uh, you know so we've been through that um, uh, situation and we have really really realized that it can't work like that you're right china plus one is the model that a lot of people are looking at for most things right now uh, how it will pan out i mean and whether india will be able to make the dent in that uh, we'll have to wait for that but right now i mean uh, between china south korea taiwan i mean this is really the hub of semiconductors so there are two aspects of it one is the availability so is are they manufacturing enough so uh, to answer that i mean they might be manufacturing a lot but the thing is the electronics manufacturing is go- growing exponentially so will they be able to keep up so that is the first part of it and the second part of it is not just the availability but the speed at which it is available so for example even if india s- strikes uh, exclusive deals with manufacturers how fast can it be available to us so a manufacturing unit uh, dedicated to the country uh, means that you know you can move faster when it comes to uh, growing your electronics industry and india is uh, mind you karunya india has been very clear that it's not just for our needs uh, right and uh, i mean india is looking at uh, the semiconductor space more from the point of view of him- emerging as a hub for it so uh, there is definitely uh, you know a strong need right now and uh, like i said the timeliness and the availability both factors have to be taken into account all right and we'll see how that plays out uh, you know for uh, the industry at large but right now definitely vedanta is the one hogging all the land right on the back of this 
development. Thank you so much, Rachita, for joining in. And thank you for our viewers for tuning in as well. I hope you get uh, more perspective after this conversation and you can understand what has really transpired and how things are likely to play out from here on. Thank you for watching.